I'd like to thank everybody from joining for joining us, no matter where you are. I'm going to go ahead and get started. Hopefully, we can have a great afternoon of, of rich sharing. Um, we are recording, and we'll make all the session resources available afterwards. We have multiple states represented, and I do want to begin our meeting today by thanking Kelly Geyer from Battelle and all of the teachers that she managed to pull in um, from the STEM networks last night um, for the LDC chat. There was really some great conversation that was very rich in discipline-specific thinking, talking about writing products, um, and, and she really put a lot of work into rallying the troops around, around that work. Um, and that said, we are looking for more, more hosts for that chat. All right, folks, just a quick reminder as we uh, get going to just check on tech. Please unmute yourself when you like to chat. We really want to hear from you and make this a conversation among us, um, not a ghost town. Our meetings follow the same format, a quick welcome, a little bit of a review of what's new, conversation around what we're learning, um, and a little bit of a preview of what's next. Sometimes that's uh, feature changes, um, things that are being developed, um, um, events, that kind of thing. We have several meetings left this year, April 2nd. Um, in April 2nd, Alex Horton from New Tech Network is going to be talking a little bit about their work they're doing, you know, very unique in the way that they are marrying LDC and project-based learning. Um, they're doing a lot of uh, interesting work around the country. And also one of our new partners, Cal Hastings from Gen Ready, is going to be talking about how um, their, force, their first foray into LDC professional development at Salem is using a flipped model. So we already have great folks on tap to, to share and learn from next month. Um, we have meetings in May, June, taking off in July. I think many of you will be at the SREB conference, as we will, in July and getting started back again in August. As I pull down through onto our agenda, I'd just like to take a moment um, to thank you all for being here and to also let you know that you know, our intent is to make this a, a, a great gathering of folks that have some site leadership, whether you're from a, a district or a regional service agency like our Georgia Resas, a state, um, like Robin and Wayne, the Kentucky team, um, or a national network like SREB or National Writing Project or Battelle. If there's somebody else who um, is not invited or that you haven't seen on this meeting that should be here, please let me know or invite them in. Um, we'd love to have them. And I'd also like to introduce to you somebody new on our team, Megan Jensen. Um, I've made uh, Megan a link on the agenda here so that you can see her bio. Megan has joined us. We're beginning to have a, a West Coast team. Those of you who know Rob know he's um, in California. And Megan is going to be and has already started doing a lot of work with the I3 grant, um, project managing that with LAUSD. Uh, and one of the very first products um, developed for the grant is a promo video. We will be posting it on YouTube, but it is hot off the presses today. Um, you can click the link, take that six minute video and use it in your work. Um, so just lots of great resources, research and learning are going to come from that project. I want to give Megan a chance to say hello um, so that you have another friendly face to network with and to work with from our team. Megan? Thank you, Barb. Yes, very, very excited to be here and, and also just wanted to mention that I've been very grateful to see a little bit of LDC implementation um, both in Florida and also in Arkansas and uh, was very excited to see just how people are um, implementing in ways that respond to their locally identified problems of practice or needs or goals. So I'll be doing a lot of that work with stakeholders out here in Los Angeles and also coordinating with uh, PD partners to implement uh, flipped PD, which we're also very excited about. So thank you. Okay. Um, you'll be hearing uh, much more from Megan as time goes on, and those of you who will be um, attending the national um, board conference next week in D.C. will also have the chance to meet her.
as we look down through our agenda, this month's summary of updates, I'd just like to not read that to you, but remind you that each month we produce basically a one-pager. Um, on there, this month, I do have uh, a couple things that I, I wanted to mention. One is, is small changes, but they do seem to mean a lot to our Core Tools user. One is the ability to drag and drop attachments now in Core Tools, but the other one we believe will go live um, over the weekend is some improvement to the skills selector in Core Tools. So there's just some nice features there that are listed. And the other thing that is there is a nice uh, two-pager about LDC courses. So as we are piloting with Fresno and beginning to take on other pilot sites, we're learning a lot. Um, so this is a nice summary for you of some of the things teachers are saying, the number of folks who are participating in the pilot right now. Um, you're going to see teacher self ratings. Uh, before is the dark red and then after is the lighter red of how they feel that they're improving on their skills. Our goal with these courses is to really help teachers with the planning and design of high quality um, LDC materials they can implement in their classrooms. Um, and to make sure that everything we're doing in those courses is really purposeful um, and teacher friendly. Also on there, you're going to see uh, just a, a rough timeline that we have our first three courses launched, um, a looking at student work courses in design, and others are, uh, will be to come. This spring, by mid-May, we should have a new and improved version of the courses, which are currently Moodle-based. And our eye, by next winter, is to have a more flexible course suite. Originally, we, we thought of these more as courselets or Khan Academy kinds of things. And then eventually, our goal in 2016 is to really have an LDC Learn environment integrated into LDC core tools. You can also see the feedback that we're receiving. And gosh, just with our pilot sites, over 22,000 views in one month of course pages. Uh, so very excited with, with what's happening and happy to talk with you, provide you with the demo. Um, and we are definitely crowdsourcing content and learning from each other there. The other thing I'd just like to mention is each month we're trying to talk a little bit about professional development. And we do have a place for you to upload your PD models. And we'd love to feature you to talk about how you're launching, growing, sustaining the LDC work as a partner. So just a, a, a plug to share those models um, and, and talk with the community of practice. We are learning a lot from each other. Any questions or comments before we move on to take a look at um, and hear from some professional development updates. Any questions or comments from the group? Okay, then what we're going to do is go ahead and pull up Tanya, Tanya Baker here. Tanya has been involved with LDC since uh, the very early days. Um, and if you click the link, Assignments Matter Task Jam, you're going to have access to some of the great work that National Writing Project is doing. I'm going to turn it over to her um, to share a little bit about what they're learning. Please feel free to ask questions, to talk further, and I'll pull up um, the assignments matter as Tanya gets started. Thanks, Barb. Can you hear me? We sure can. You sound great. Oh, good. <laughs> um, so I think I have about five minutes to talk, so I'm going to try to hit the highlights and then be more than willing to take any questions. Um, we, as you said, we've been involved in LDC um, almost from the beginning, and in the first three years of implementation, we worked, um, the National Writing Project is a national professional develop, development community with just under 200 sites around the country, but when we worked with LDC, we worked um, 
pretty deeply and intensively with with a few sites, about 20 sites over the course of three years. Um, as the as LDC tools were being developed and um, things were rolling out and being iterated, we were in early, and then um, we haven't um, had much a lot of intense professional development work. I know a lot of people rolled this into their professional development offerings, but because of the way the National Writing Project works, most of the professional development work happens at sites. So some of our local sites who are involved in the initiative have continued to be professional development providers in their area, but nationally we hadn't really had an opportunity to, to take big next steps. And then we found this opportunity through the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation, which was to offer high reach professional development. And we wanted to tie that to our LDC work, but we didn't know how to do uh, reaching a large number of teachers with a small amount of money um, with the intense program of LDC. So we went back to teachers who had been really successful implementers in LDC and asked them if you could only have a small amount of time or kind of dip into LDC, what would be most useful? And the things that they told us were really thinking about tasks and the task bank and the jurying rubric were really, really um, high leverage points for them. So we worked with six teachers who had done uh, intense two or more years of LDC professional development with us and had made and taught <clears throat> several modules each and they helped design this thing that we called uh, the Assignments Matter Task Jam and basically what we opened this opportunity to any writing project site who actually had no um, no practice with LDC so these were all brand new people and each site um, was invited to bring a site liaison to a one day face to face meeting and then that ta that liaison would be tasked with doing a one day professional development um, with at least 25 people at their local place on a Saturday and we would connect them all virtually so that they could share the work and their questions with each other. So. Um, you have access to the materials that we gave everyone um, who served as a liaison and if you click through you'll find that you have access to a G plus community where people um, posted pictures and tasks from that day and I will tell you if you do click through that that you'll see that there are some great LDC tasks and there's a lot of stuff that would never count because we're talking about people who sort of had somewhere between four and six hours of professional learning time together. Um, so, so I'm not touting this for high leverage outcomes for producing perfect tasks in any way, but I would say that um, we there, there was a lot of leverage to this sort of easy in, and that's what I really wanted to talk about. Um, we have had site directors who've done really lots of intensive writing project professional development who have called me to say, oh my god, what a great idea to do something so joyful and joyous and we were able to bring back people who had been connected to the writing project and then uh, went missing or we brought in a whole new groups of teachers who'd never heard about the writing project and these LDC tools were so easy to use and so clearly helped them to to build something that they could take back to their classroom the next day and now they're all excited to do more things with the writing project so the first thing I'd say is that um, putting together this task jam was really uh, not that difficult and we think it had this great reach and, and, and served as an access point from which we feel like we're going to be able to um, develop more relationships and the opportunity to do deeper work. Many people wanted more time, wanted access to more people, wanted to um, take the work that they had started on that day and rework it and bring it back. Um, so we're really excited about it as a as a jump start and that it created a lot of interest. There were also writing project directors who said, like I think in Minneapolis was one place, <laughs> like 
what is this LDC? We've never heard of it before. So we were able to feed back to our LDC colleagues, hey, here are some places where LDC hasn't gotten to yet, which I didn't know there really were any still, but um, who are really interested and excited. So we feel like we created some new potential colleagues. Um, and uh, right now we're sort the leadership team is sorting through the tasks and we actually have a second meeting with the liaisons where we'll work with the during rubric and we have some students coming in to do something that we're calling the shark tank, which I'd love to tell you about if you're interested. And um, we're working with all of them to think about what is a second small step that you would take with these people or with another set of people using the tasks or the drafts of tasks that got started on that first day. What's the next small step? So. While we had started LDC with this really deep dive, what we're now doing is, um, one of the things we're now doing is thinking about what it means to make sort of palatable small bites and how people ease their way into the LDC system. So I think I'll stop there and I'm happy to answer any questions. Let's open it up to the group to answer you. Here's some of your questions, here's some of your thoughts. I'm dying to know what the shark tank is. <laughs> so, <laughs> one of the things we wa wanted to do was to help teachers think about the during rubric as one of many sort of tests of whether a writing assignment or a writing task is a good one. So um, in our meeting in March, we we're going to take them through like a really sort of three steps of thinking about that. Is this a good writing assignment? So one step is just sort of sorting tasks without the during rubric, just saying what's your gut or what do you notice or what are some um, criteria that you yourself have when you're looking at this, is this a good assignment or not? And then we're going to go from that to looking at the LDC modules and thinking about um, instructional questions that come up like what would kids need to be successful at that and then sort of sort the tasks by what like kinds of instructional support that kids might need to be able to do them well then we'll have them work with the jury and rubric and then finally in the afternoon what we're going to do is have a group of students so we have an actually an LDC colleague so there may be some people on the call who know him Cosby Hunt in DC and Cosby is piloting a new class called History in the Real World where kids take a semester of a history class and then they spend a semester working in a historical at a historical monument or park and we have three kids from History in the Real World coming and we're going to present some assignments that we think are good and we're going to ask them from a student perspective is this a good assignment? Would you be excited to write about it? Would you be interested? Would you learn from writing about it? So we're going to get student feedback on our um, tasks in the manner of the show Shark Tank, you know, where you present an entrepreneurial idea and they tell you if it's a good one or not. So we're really excited to put some a whole bunch of tasks in front of students and have them give us some student view feedback on them. That's really exciting to get that directly from the students. Kelly Geyer had a question. It says, was it assignments matter all around the bigger teaching tasks, or did you also dive into the tasks focused on individual skills? Uh, we worked on the on big tasks, on final tasks, and one of the things that we'll do in this next meeting is. Um, is have the as I said, there's one part where they're going to look at sort of, you know, what might be hard about this for students, and then so what are the instructional implications of that, and then what might be some mini tasks. So we didn't get into mini tasks on this first day. We started with the big tasks, which I'm not sure is the only way in, but that's what we did. Other questions or comments from the group? Bridget, it looks like you're there, and Kathy, Karen, but I'm not quite hearing you. Is 
to, it looks like some folks might be trying to talk, but we're not hearing them. So you may want to check your sound to make sure you didn't mute yourself. And you could put a question. Mark, can you hear me? Chat. Yes, we can hear you. Uh, this is Kelly. I was just curious. I was looking at um, the hashtag task matter on Twitter, and I was curious, did you have folks tweet their tasks, and did they fit into the character limits, or how did that work? Um, mostly they didn't tweet their tasks. They tweeted about what they were doing, or if they had a question, or if they had an insight. Um, and then we had a G plus community too, which as I said, you can get into as long as you um, try to reserve judgment, because there's a whole range from brilliant LDC tasks to things that are clearly not in any way related to the task bank. Um, but people could, in the G plus community, put their whole task in a post there. Um, or they could type them somewhere else, and then some of them did like tweet a link to a task or to a blog where they'd written about the task they were working on. So that's mostly, mostly the, the Twitter feed was a lot about, uh, a lot of celebrate. I mean, it's really interesting, the frame. I thought this was really important in today's day and age. There's so few opportunities for this. It was a lot of celebration of being together on a Saturday with people from across three time zones, all working on the same thing, all at the same time and having the capacity to talk to each other about it. There's a lot of, in, if you follow the Twitter feed, it's really a lot of that kind of thing. But the G plus community, you see more the range of the way people were thinking about writing tasks. Hi, Tanya, thank you so much for being willing to share what you've been working on. And besides all the great resources we received, you hit on some, some real key themes that I've also heard from other people in this community around how to make LDC lighter and more joyful and, and less daunting to implement, thinking about multiple ways into LDC, and also finding ways that, hey, that may not be the you know exemplary LDC task, but it's a stronger assignment, and, you know, and honoring the effort and the uh, the work that's being done. So thank you so much. And boy, what a nice uh, piggyback off of Michelle Lewis's talking about the tweet in last month. Um, yes, I loved there. that. By the way, I don't think I said that to Michelle. So if she's on. That was fantastic. So we're really trying to reimagine and keep thinking about how we can how how we how we do LDC PD. And on that note, I'd really like to turn uh, the floor over to Nancy Dean. Nancy Dean um, is deeply involved in the work at PK Young. Um, and if you folks remember, we had Christy Gabbard talk in January about the event that they did. Um, Suzanne was able to attend where there was live streaming from PK. You folks have on your agenda the link, so you have the recording to the archived PD. But also, those of you who, do, who may not know Nancy, Nancy is a gifted writer. And her keynote speech it is something something to save, use um, um, in your own work. I have it here for the community, and I just like to turn the floor to Nancy to talk a little bit about lessons learned from putting together that blended PD event and streaming at the schools and the work that they're doing. And again, just something that makes you feel feel good about your your mission. Um, it's just to read that keynote. Uh, it's a treat for yourself and a great thing to share with your users. Nancy? I'm, uh, can you hear me? I don't think I'm muted. It doesn't look like I'm muted. Nancy. Can anyone hear me? We can hear you. Yes, well, you we can. can. Okay. All right. Well, um, I don't know many of the names, but uh, I'm with the National Literacy Project, and um, we work in about 25 different districts with LDC in Florida, and it's not snowing here. I'm sorry, but um, so it's like Arizona. It's beautiful. We, um, we have a partner in each district that kind of guides the professional development, trains the local people, and uh, and turns the professional development over to the districts themselves. And so far, it seems to be working really well. 
one of the things that we have tried to do is in each of our districts um, as much as possible to uh, identify and support a demonstration school that uh, people can visit to see LDC in action or aspects of LDC in action. And that's one of the things. I am the partner with uh, the Northeast Florida Educational Consortium and also that includes PK Young, which is the uh, research school of the University of Florida. Uh, what we did for this particular day uh, as part of our demonstration school um, was to focus on uh, on academic writing. And academic writing uh, seems to be an issue. And we had a huge crowd. We had about 60 people there um, that came to spend the day with us. And it was organized like this, just briefly. Um, we had our a kickoff and introductions and all the normal things. And then uh, we had four different teachers who um, shared student work identified some of the issues related to some critical problems in academic writing, and then um, uh, had them write their own mini tasks that could address those issues after they'd gone through some pedagogy. Um, so it was a wonderful day and very successful. It was wonderful to have Suzanne there. But um, uh, there are these days, I, um, when Barb asked me to share some of the uh, lessons learned, um, it, it's harder to do these days than I think most people imagine. Um, so I kind of grouped it into four different areas that people need to keep in mind when they're doing days like this. Um, and the first thing is that someone has to own it. Uh, there's food to be arranged, room arrangements, technology arrangements, materials, developing the agenda and the schedule, uh, publicity and registration. Someone has to be the person that owns it. And that's what Christy does uh, at PK Young. And uh, we worked together on that and uh, it was fun. It was, it's really fun to do it. The second thing is to make it important. And uh, the, the kids need to know that they need to put on their company manners. The campus needs to be clean and squared away. Um, somebody's got to publicize the event. So making it important, it's not just because it is important, but also because it makes the school feel like they're part of something bigger. And that brings up the practice of the teachers and also the kids. The third thing, um, lesson learned, is to work with the teachers before. Um, you have to be certain that they understand the purpose and the work. I know Suzanne thought, um, Eric, and he was wonderful. He was absolutely wonderful. He talked about uh, putting quotes in context and making them uh, an integral part of the essay. Um, but it took three different times to make sure that he understood exactly what we wanted to be the focus of the work. And um, also to let the teachers know that it's okay to stage it that if you're doing something for professional development, you want people to see it at its best. Not fake, but at its best. Um, so that staging is okay. Um, if you're doing video or classroom visits, that there has to be some pre-briefing and debriefing. Um, and that whoever is in charge needs to be there for the filming. I was there for several of the film, for all of the filming and also for uh, the refilming and the refilming so that we have we could develop the best possible experience for the people that came for the day. Um, okay, then involve and orient the students. You know, sometimes we forget about the kids. I was so happy to hear the National Writing Project was involving kids, but I, I, kids need to understand the purpose and who's going to be there and give them a sense of how important they are to such a day and um, help them understand that they're part of something bigger than the lesson. So there's a pre-briefing and a debriefing for kids as well as the teachers. Uh, I you know, spend some time with kids talking about turn off your phones, um, take your hats off, put your hoods down, we want to see your faces. And they were great. I mean, they totally understood that this was something important and that was a nice thing that they could be part of it. Then the last lesson learned, I think, is that you have to reward the participating teachers and students. 
Um, we give at PK Young a small stipend for the teachers that are involved. Uh, I think that's so important to recognize that teachers are professionals and, um, and reward them financially for what they do. It's a lot of extra work. Um, treats for the kids, uh, donuts, or, you know, anything, I mean, maybe healthy food uh, would be good too, but some kind of treats for the kids. And then we, uh, we've done these days before, this wasn't the first time, but um, we always celebrate after the event with the teachers and go out for adult beverages and uh, just enjoy a job well done and always send our thank you notes and emails of congratulations to the teachers. So that's my advice about a demonstration day, a demonstration school, and um, the things that have been successful for us. Are there any questions? Are you all reading my speech and then you're not listening to anything I say? <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to just go ahead and thank Nancy for kind of giving us that insider view. When you see an event or hear about it, you know, we, you get to see that the turkey's already on the table. Um, but for those of you who are contemplating doing something blended, video streaming, we'd love to be your partner um, or, or, again, to connect you to other people who are doing this kind of work. There are so many great things happening all over the country. The last meeting I missed, I was in schools. Uh, I was at Shalmet High School in Louisiana, and I just wish you could have all seen what I saw. Um, so anyway, we can can make our great LDC sites learning labs um, and open that up as professional development. Um, PK Young is certainly leading the way in figuring that out. Any any other questions or anything for Nancy before we move on? All right, lots of lots of great comments in the chat. People appreciating that that advice, kind of giving you the other side of it. We got to see this in January, the the pre-marketing, the advertising, and now we get to, to kind of get a little bit of the debrief. Uh, another event that's virtual that's going to be coming up that I just want to put on your radar, real briefly, um, is that Melissa Mayville, um, professional development director at NEA is looking to introduce um, LDC to the National Education Association networks. And we are working with them on a webinar for their membership. And one of the things that uh, we're in the process of doing is reaching out to teachers who are LDC teachers and NEA members to help co-facilitate. As this uh, develops, um, I'll, I'll let you know more about it, but it's a great opportunity to get LDC out to a really broad group of folks. Um, NEA has been working on a common core toolkit and began doing some webinars for PD for their membership around common core implementation this year. So we're, we're sure excited about that opportunity. The other thing I want to share with you uh, just around um, some of the things that are being developed and also around making some of the uh, items we have in LDC more discover, more easier to discover are some new features. Um, I'd like to just to help us highlight partner profiles and feature partner collections. I'm going to pull that up for a moment and just show you what I mean by that. I think you're going to be really excited and I, I'm hoping you're going to begin plotting and planning yours. One of the things we're doing is unveiling user profiles in a way that it, it is going to share more details in um, a nice thumbnail. This is an example of a prototype of the Arkansas Department of Education partner profile. So it will help people find you It'll brand your work and also recognize some of the things are, that are being developed. Um, so that's an example of the partner profile. And then we debuted the idea of collections back in December. Now we're going to have featured collections. And you know, just like on Amazon and other websites, featured collections are going to pop more than other collections. One of the things I, I, I'm, I want you to think with me about is, yes, those collections could be your exemplary and good-to-go 
mini tasks and modules, but it could be more than that. You're the curator of your collection. I know the, the uh, teacher leaders in Louisiana are working on a collection. Um, it could be something that's a really good example that addresses maybe, um, I think I live in Pennsylvania, the biology keystone exams collection. It's all about that eligible content. Um, New Tech Network has their PBL themed work. So this is something that, that really you decide what goes in there. Um, you will also be able to get a hyperlink to that so you can be putting the feature collection link on your materials to market. We can be putting it on your partner page. This is very small, but already um, when you go on the LDC curriculum library, on the left-hand side in the filters, you can see a partner filter. Arkansas is our test and it's the only one that's live right now. But you'll be able then to be uh, discoverable that way. And then there'll be a, a, just a nice looking a flag or, or feature for anything that you develop and create. So Rob will really be spearheading working with you on this. So uh, start thinking about that. The other thing, um, any, any thoughts on that? Any reactions? How about just like an ooh, ah, I think that's pretty cool. Ooh, ah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> it is cool. I, 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 I get excited about these kinds of things. The I, other thing, go ahead. No, I was just going to say I agree. Though it might have sounded like I was being silly. I was actually really agreeing. No, I love it. Um, the, the other thing I wanted to kind of highlight, it just seems like, uh, just like we have March Madness reports, it seems like there's a lot of buzz and activity around mini tasks right now. Um, so it's a great time to push in your network to get some of those great ideas um, published, shared, and we are going to be having a special webinar um, P. David Pearson has agreed to spend some time with us, um, and, and what an amazing, um, an, an amazing opportunity. It is going to be geared towards teachers as well as coaches and school leaders, but our next LDC in Action webinar, the first one was uh, Research for Action, the next one is going to be March 25th. We would really love your help in publicizing this in your network and talking it up. Our goal with these is to be interactive, to stop and ask questions, to have the opportunity to talk to P. David, um, who leads our, our team, the Berkeley team, who's really vetting and, and working on the mini task library. So it's a, a, I hope you'll help us with that and consider attending. And especially those of you who have mini task projects or choose that as a way in, um, we'd love to have you really sharing your practice on the call, giving examples. Um, on the webinar. So letting you know about that. And then the other thing I thought you might think is really interesting and you have the chance to play with it is the um, draft. I'm going to pull it up here. Draft mini task library guidelines. Right now, we don't really have a submit your mini tasks um, for during process the way we do for modules. We, we just take them as they come, as people share them with us, and they've, they've solely been marked as exemplary. One of the things we've been doing has been working with that Berkeley team, and they've been making recommendations to begin to split these as good to go or exemplary. And as Tanya said, the mini tasks and some of these smaller things are ways sometimes to introduce LDC. So this is a rubric that is in revision. Um, in the next uh, month or so, it'll be finalized. So it's definitely um, needs a little work yet, but we thought you might like to play around with it, get it in your hands to be able to think about. Um, so again, beginning to look at good to go characteristics as well as exemplary. And please chime in if you have any questions or thoughts on that as I kind of move through and share a few of these documents. Um, anything on mini tasks?
Okay. The other thing that I'd really like to make sure that you're aware of, it's not ready to be published yet, but I know that you'll want to take and run with, is the draft of the module with C3 skills. This is in the resources and development folder, and we're thinking about the C3 social studies framework, so you can again begin to play around with the skills list. You'll see Susan Weston is, is one of the team working on that. And Susan, I don't know if you'd like to jump in and say anything about the development process or what you're learning at all. Not to put you on the spot, I didn't talk to you beforehand. Um, but please feel free if you, if you would like to jump in at all. But the idea of really developing those discipline-specific prototypes, so you can begin to see what this looks like for social studies. Yeah. Sure. Um, the crucial issue for me was working through the C3 framework, which is huge, trying to sort out which issues had to be in the, um, the quality of the teaching task itself, and then trying to think, what are the issues where they're pushing us past where many of the instructional ladders have gone before. Um, probably my favorite aha was looking at their very beginning in C3 where they want students to, de to develop compelling questions or understand why a question they're going to consider is compelling and then break it down with supporting questions they'll have to answer. But I think that may really give us a new angle on how you do that opening with a task uh, to allow the students either to say that they can see why this is worth their time or put teachers on their metal to make the connections um, rather than just say, I'm the boss and you have to study this. Uh, there's also clearly a big push on what kinds of sources people use, um, a big push which is going to be interesting to figure out what we can do with on civic participation. And there's probably a sweet option for extensions where students do things in the real world. But I realize many social studies modules um, have in the transition to writing something that's got a certain quality of practicing being a good participant. So trying to just use C3 to keep thinking what else could we do and how could we do it better and how could we set things up so people who are committed to that look at LDC and say, ooh, ah! Uh, we haven't earned the ooh-ah yet, but that's what we're going for. Uh, I think the secret is really resonating tightly with the language of the, of the discipline and the framework. Any thoughts, questions, comments, folks, while you have Susan here? I just have to agree with Susan um, on the extensions feature and how that really aligns with the uh, call to action in our social studies see through framework. Um, in the trainings I've been doing, our social state teachers are really making those connections, and especially with that extension section and how powerful that can be. Thanks a lot, Kelly. That's Kelly Philbeck from Kentucky. The other thing I'd like to, I'm not going to go, th go there really thoroughly in the interest of time, but I have uploaded a slew of resources for you that have been in development um, with I3, um, and we're really working to update some of our marketing materials, so there's all different kinds of great one and two pages here that I would encourage you to dig into. One of the things I would say too, we've been asking you for your MPD implementation plans and models, so it's really important we ante up um, those kinds of things as well. Here's one that we've developed with Syracuse School District, really oriented to problems of practice for you to review and think about. And, and we can certainly chat offline and or make any of these things a subject of deeper conversation. The I3 implementation plan is also there um, and available for you to take a look at. Materials like uh, a teacher learning path are beginning to articulate our vision for Flip PD and to begin to talk about how the courses might work over the arc of the year. 
Um, another great one is just some stats on journeying um, and the participation of the community of practice and how we're trying to build journeying as this natural pathway rather than this judgy thing that it's really a process of looking at teacher work by teachers beginning with self beginning in a formative collegial community and then this co collaborative national community so you can see a little bit about the the large-scale participation of, of the community of practice um, what modules have been submitted and just since October now some of these during reviews aren't complete but almost 5500 during reviews have occurred since October so people are definitely getting in that now online system embedded in core tools and really really using it so as you're doing PD and talking about during we thought that these might be some some great resources and and wanted to to really load you up with things that you could take a look at and use in your own work um, over the next coming month so wanted to make you aware of that um, and then the other thing the flip side of that is to ask you um, it seems like when Suzanne and I and Rob and Chad are on the road, people uh, uh, bring things out of their uh, virtual book bags. Hey, I have this video, or hey, we created this handout. We would love to crowdsource, especially videos. We just got some great videos from Florida, and the one that I put on the agenda here that we are um, going to put on YouTube. Um, so please, there's a folder there for you. Anything you'd like to share with the community um, that we can repurpose and make that we are having to do. And along that line, I'd like to turn it over to Amy Spicer, then Callie Galbraith, to share with you some state level resources that you can see in trainings and other resources. I'm going to pull up Colorado first. Um, um, Hi, can you hear me? We sure can. Okay, great. Um, hi, this is Amy Spicer from the Colorado Education Initiative. Uh, the resource that Barb is displaying for you right now is actually with our partners at the Colorado Department of Education. Um, in Colorado, we have 10 content area standards, and we're um, a heavily local control state. So the standard team at, the, at CDE built out sample curricular units for all 10 content area standards. Um, there's about five to six units, K-12 per grade and subject. So there's English language arts, science, social studies, um, health, comprehensive health, dance, music, arts, all, all sorts of standards. So what we did was we gathered a group of LBC teacher leaders from across the state and wrote LBC modules. I think we have 32 modules that are connected to English language arts, science, social studies, and comprehensive health in the secondary grades. Um, we just released this last week online, and we're very curious to see what the usage is going to be. The overlap between districts that have adopted the district sample curriculum project units and who have been LDC trained is a narrow overlap. So. We're looking for people to pilot these units so that we can um, further vet them. We have not officially juried them yet, but all of the standards team at CDE came to our Colorado jurying workshop, and after that, they vetted all of these modules. So once we have some student work attached to them, we'll submit them for national jurying. They're all in core tools as well. That is so exciting. So anybody can have access to these modules in core tools. Yeah. Uh, and, and just what a comprehensive resource. Any comments from, from the group? Um, ooh and ah is the theme of the day, I'll, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're, we're looking to build some elementary ones this summer so that we'll have at least one module per grade K-12. <laughs> That, that's exciting folks it's just amazing lots of great resources to get your hands in and if other other people are trying these are you interested in their student work absolutely 
So, so just some thoughts there, folks. If you're as you're getting started with with other uh, with folks having martyrs uh, modules already started, I'm going to turn it over to Kelly Galbraith. Uh, um, something a little bit different. This is Pennsylvania Steelers Alliance System website. Hi, Barb. This is Kelly. Can you hear me? Hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Sorry, it takes a second to mute and unmute. Hello, can you hear me? <laughs> oh, that's okay. Thanks, Dana. Um, so this is Kelly from Lancaster, Lebanon, IU13 in Pennsylvania. And what you're looking at right now is the Pennsylvania Department of Ed Standards Aligned System Portal. This is the portal for um, educators across the state of Pennsylvania, but there are a lot of great resources here. And so as you can see, if you go to the pdesas.org website and you type LDC in the search window, you'll actually see 132 LDC tasks populate and all of those tasks have been written by Pennsylvania educators. So I see they're working their way up here on the screen. And so what you can see is that um, currently we have tasks that range from 4th through 12th grade from across the state of Pennsylvania and these are all written at the task level, not at the module level, although many of these appear in core tools. So for example, um, Barb, I don't know if you're driving, but if you could uh -huh. click into Heroes versus Villains, um, the first one there, um, that is the same exemplary module that's also listed in core tools for fourth and fifth grade. Um, and so in our statewide portal, you can just see here that, um, you know, it, it provides our Pennsylvania academic standards as well as our PA core standards. And um, there's a great video with Barb as the background voice underneath a description that explains how to navigate within the standards aligned system portal. But if you actually scroll down, um, this is a task bank, but you don't see the task. So I want to show you where you actually find the LDC task, and it's strategically placed. Um, so it's actually under instructional procedures because we all know that tasks are intended to be taught. So we want teachers in Pennsylvania to be looking for, okay, how do I teach this thing and where can I find the teaching task? And you'll see it located right there um, underneath the daily plan with some um, general suggestions for how the task could be taught. Those suggestions are the same for all of the tasks in our SAS portal simply because um, this is a task bank and it's intended to give teachers ideas for crafting um, reading and writing assignments. At the bottom we have the LDC rubric and when these tasks are uploaded into the SAS portal it's um, really um, the timing. So um, these were uploaded in the fall right before um, LDC released the 3.0 template task collection and the new rubrics for elementary. But what you'll notice in the rubrics is that um, we do a lot of summer work with trying to find benchmark sets of student papers. And I don't know about you, but I find seeing the student work is so helpful and is a wonderful teaching tool for teachers. So in some of our tasks within the portal, you can actually click on the hyperlinked levels of performance from the rubric. And if you do, you'll actually get a student paper that's annotated. Um, we bring together summer work teams of teachers at IU13 who um, go through all of the student work searching for benchmark sets. They score it, double score it, triple score it. <laughs> we annotate it. And um, a lot of work goes into um, what goes on the PDE Standards Aligned System portal. But um, this is a great resource that certainly can span beyond Pennsylvania educators. So you're certainly welcome to go in and explore and, and see if you can find some, some tasks that might be useful to you. I think also it's a great example, just like with Colorado, of how two states have made things broadly accessible. Whether you've had LDC training or not, these are resources are, are going to help implement college and career ready standards. And that teachers were involved in the development process. I just think that's so critical. Um, 
um, to the work. And finally, I do see there's some things in the chat. Um, uh, a good question, um, are these portals um, created in addition to what the teachers put in core tools? Um, in some cases, there's, there's overlapping, but to get populated on the state website, um, it, it also needs to be there. But now with the featured collections, Pennsylvania you could have a featured collection in core tools with the partner profiles like you saw with um, Arkansas, we're going to be able to group and feature those things. So, Heather, you are absolutely on the right track. You're, you're um, right, right there um, thinking you're ahead of us um, um, in what we, are going, what we are now just starting to be able to do. And so just think about how this can impact everybody's work. In our, in our last final minutes here, I do just want to um, mention that we have a few spots left for next week's event in DC and that is teachers get to they register and can bring a buddy to the National Board Conference with a one-day jurying event. Um, also reminding you that the spring jurying deadline is May 1st you know to get those modules ready to submit and cleaned up. We are working on a summer annual partners convening. Last year we were in Chicago. Um, looking at that somewhere in the same time frame of early June. And the other thing I would say to you um, is as we are um, all putting together events, if we, can, if we can share each other's events within our networks, um, letting, uh, letting teachers within your network know that registration is now open for the College and Career Standards Networking Conference. That's been a national LDC and letting them know about some of these things. That would be great. Um, we're also really trying with as many of these events as possible to create digital resources just like today. The recording from today will be available that you can use um, all of the resources from today to make it easier for all of us to kind of crowdsource and share each other's work um, rather than doing that work uh, in our separate corners and, and repeating the work. Um, hopefully we can go further that way. Um, it's 4.29. Um, as, as has become our habit, we're going to stop the recording in a minute or two and I'll kind of hang around um, for Q&A. Um, I'd like to just open the floor for anybody for any final questions about anything that's been shared um, and say thank you.